and welcome to Connections Radio Show, where we talk about ideas that matter. I'm glad you've made the connection and are with us today. I'm Lori Fitz, your host. And the goal of our show is to explore a wide range of topics that challenge us to see ourselves, our community, and the world around us. Get us thinking, get us talking, get us wondering about what if, and challenge to do something more. Asked to do something in our community to make it better. When I was a kid, my grandpa would take me to parks that were built by the WPA. Some of these parks are lost and kids don't even know about the, the parks and the roads and the, the world that was built by the WPA. And my grandpa, who had lived through the Depression, had a great respect for work. His last words to me, where work is a privilege. Work is something that everyone deserves. Well, it stayed with me. And over these last 40 years, it's been a real heartbreak, and I think it would have been a heartbreak for my grandfather, to see the unions disappear, the rights of workers, the middle class that was built on the backbone of good respect of workers, is dwindling to the point of almost non-existence. So before having the guest come today for Connections Radio Show, I wasn't aware of the WPA projects for artists as well. And today we're going to be talking about the WPA theater projects and a play that's being brought back to life from those theater projects about the rights of workers. And it's framed as a children's play. It's called Revolt, and it is being adapted by Kit Bix. And we have Kit joining us on air, online. Welcome, Kit. Hi. So gl- Thank you. So glad that you're here today to be talking about the show coming up. And in our first segment, we're going to be really focusing on the history of the WPA. And to do that, we also have uh, Peter Ratcliffe, who is the co-executive director of the Eastside Freedom Library. Welcome, Peter. Good morning. And we've got Shannon Tui, who is the director of Revolt, the play that is uh, being drawn from the WPA projects. Welcome, Shannon. Oh, thank you. Happy to be here. We've got Zach Holmquist, who plays in the, uh, in the show. He is playing the role of Paolo. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning, Zach. And we've got Christopher Mogul, who is the associate producer. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, Christopher. So, my friend Kit, what inspired you to bring this show back? And then I want to go over to Peter to tell us a little bit more about the Federal Theater Project. But I want to start with you, Kit. Oh, golly. Um, Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, (laughs) I... um, you know, I had been doing all these benefit uh, readings and the production last year, It Can't Happen Here, and, um, you know, raising some money for groups like ACLA, ACLU and such. And I'm a um, federal theater project buff, and so when the Fringe Lottery came around, I thought, well, I want to do another one that is relevant, uh, because I do believe that we can learn something from the works of that time, progressive works from the uh, New Deal era. And um, so I originally was going to do an FTP play, an obscure one, about a woman who (laughs) runs for president, and she has a child with a disability, and she's eventually stopped. (laughs) <laughs> but that was for a tiny little theater, so I and I had applied for two venues, and I got the large venue, and I then so I chose Revolt of the Beavers, which is the the full title, Revolt of the Beavers, because um, I just think labor is is uh, you know I grew up pretty much the same era as you when labor was the backbone and the voice of the Democratic Party. And I've been seeing what's what's happening and how this, uh, especially how this administration is 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 devastating the uh, unions and what's what's left of them and and taking away um, what uh, what protections we have. So, um, so I wanted to. I figured this would be a good choice to bring attention to the role of labor and the role of unions in our history. Terrific. Now, for our audience, I'm just going to give a little overview of what Revolt is. Uh, Revolt was a 1937 federal theater 
project oh. production of a children's play about workers, and these were cast as beavers, who are exploited by a cruel and greedy factory owner and who form a union to demand higher wa- uh, wages. And, of course, those wages were provided in bark um, and reasonable shifts. Uh, they are led by sprightly, smart labor organizer, Oakleaf. And when the owner won't negotiate, they stage a revolt and the owner gives up and hands them the key to the factory. So you've updated this, and you're also adding some uh, a little ed- environmental theme, I understand, as well. Yeah, yes. Uh, we thought um, we had made the decision um, early on that uh, we should make it more topical, bring it up to date. Um, so y- there are uh, additional themes. It's it's really um, quite a, it's, it's a... It's somewhat of a departure from the original um, in that respect. Peter... Tell us about the Federal Theater Project, the branch of the FDR's WPA. Well, you know, the Great Depression began in 1929. In 1932, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt was elected president. He really didn't have a program. Uh, The idea was that uh, Herbert Hoover had been president during the Great Depression and continued until the very end of his uh, uh, regime arguing that laissez-faire capitalism would come back on its own. Roosevelt's election was an indication that people didn't believe that and thought that an active government was necessary. Over 1933, various forms of protest, protest by farmers, protest by workers, protest by unemployed veterans in what was called the Bonus Army, all united in the voice that the federal government had a responsibility to do something. And the initial something was to create jobs. Mm -hmm. And so the WPA was a job creation program. And there was great discussion about should these just be make work jobs or should they serve some purpose? And among the unemployed were unemployed academics, unemployed artists, and the government began to develop programs nationally and state by state that would create projects where art, ideas, and road building, hospital building, so on. Dams. Dams, right, would all be created uh, to produce things that would be useful. And that critical thinking, that's a refreshing thought. Was considered useful. Critical (laughs) thinking was considered useful. Uh, And so whether it was uh, Jacob Lawrence uh, in his first opportunity to be paid for creating visual art, or whether it was poets who got the first opportunity to get paid for writing poems, or playwrights and actors. Um, This was what the WPA began to develop. And in the realm of the arts, there were a series of programs, one being the Federal Theater Project, another the Federal Writers Project, that specifically created funding uh, for unemployed artists to create work and present it to the public. And so Revolt of the Beavers fits very nicely in that it was aimed as a children's play. And the idea was this was a way to educate, to energize, and even to expose young people to critical thinking and critical thinking through the arts. And it had multi-layers, you know, like any good allegory. You know, the, there was uh, the message for the children to understand that, you know, collaboration's a good idea. Yes, and yeah. And there was also a, a, a strong sting in there about, you know, there are rights for workers and those, right. those need to be respected. Right. And I think, you know, the kids have fond feelings about furry animals and especially beavers <laughs> and as industrious animals. And it's been interesting to me that this play has been occasionally uh, revived. Mm-hmm. And to my knowledge, no contemporary company has had the chutzpah to put the actors on roller skates, which was how the play was originally done. Seriously? And so to think about how to engage uh, young people, uh-huh. and maybe God help us today, it would be on these mechanized scooters. Uh-huh. But, you know, something like, so that this was a cool thing uh-huh. uh, for kids to see and to be drawn to and to be invited to think critically about work and workers' rights, as, as you framed it. 
maybe there's a way to do some gamification with it. I think that you know, <laughs> somehow with with collab, you get points for collaboration uh, in a gamification mode. Of, yeah. Well, uh, I'm I'm just I'm hopeful <laughs> that that the word will get out uh, and parents will bring kids sure. to see this play. Well, we do encourage our audience uh, to go see shows. Mm -hmm. Um, We encourage them to take children to to shows or art programs to give them the chance to be exposed to to ways of looking at the world. And an artist's lens is a powerful lens because it allows us to imagine something different. Absolutely. Let me just say a little bit about research that I've done with my partner, Beth Cleary, into a federal theater project project in Buffalo, New York, Mm -hmm. where a troupe of eight African Americans who called themselves the Jubilee Singers and were part of the Federal Theater Project created plays in which invisible African Americans held little white people by the strings and (laughs) did an adapted version of Uncle Tom's Cabin that ends with Abe Lincoln, a puppet of Abe Lincoln behind a scrim, reading the Emancipation Proclamation (sighs) over the body of the Uncle Tom Ugh. puppet. So, and those were children's plays. Wow. Those are for kids, to, and they were ostensibly innocuous because they were children's <laughs> plays. But powerful. But powerful. And there was mucho criticism, obviously, of all of this work. Sure, sure. I, can, I, I read that, as uh, Kit and others have sent me information about this, uh, about the puppet shows that were going on, but I had oh, yeah. no idea that they were those kinds of puppet shows that, that had that kind of power. Right. There were six African-American puppet companies funded by the Federal Theater Project around the United States. Well, good things to know and tell about the Federal Theater Project. And we have more to talk about with Revolt, the 1937 Federal Theater Project production of the children's plays about workers that are cast as beavers. We're going to talk more about the show as well as more about um, how art can act as part of the resistance. And this is a good time to be talking about that. You're listening to AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota, and we'll be right back after a short break. 